a supplicable verse or we don't have a hadith which is authentic to say that Israfil is the one to blow in the trumpet. Actually, this is from the Israeliyat. Narrated by these Jewish books, but not from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though we have respected scholars, they say Israfil, but we don't have a proof for that. So, the one who blows into it is called Sahib al Qarb, or Nafiq al Sur, he's his name. What is the time between the two trumpet sounds? The first one, what is the time between them? First sound and second time, is that we don't know how much, how long, but we, don't, we know that from the hadith, is to be 40, as Abu Hurairah rates, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا بَيْنَ النَّفْخَتَيْنَ أَرْبَعُونَ between the two sounding of the trumpet is to be 40. We asked him, Abu Hurairah, is it 40 days? He said, I don't know. 40 months? He said, I don't know. 40 years? He said, I don't know. 40. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said that the day where the trumpet would sound is the day of Jumu'ah. So the day of Jumu'ah is the day where the trumpet will sound. And that is why between Fajr and sunrise, we have all the animals are scared and terrified. Why? Because they know from their instinct that this is the day of Jum'ah and it could be the day of what? Of judgment. So all the animals, all the creatures except for man and jinn, they're careless. They're careless and also you need to know that they are more of intellect. You see the animals they don't know, but they know this is Jum'ah, but they know they, they are instinct this is the day of Jum'ah. When the sunrise takes place on the day of Jum'ah, they will be relaxed. Because the trumpet would sound between Fajr and sunrise. Most of the people will be asleep. So the sunrise comes, they know that it's not the day of resurrection. But as for the human being, some of them they are intellectual enough because they know that we haven't got yet the ten signs of the day of resurrection. We have the Dajjal, we have the Hadith, we have the Intrigid Majuj, and all of that didn't come. So they know it's not the day of not yet. So, um, but some of them, even if it's happening, they are oblivious, they don't care. So they are careless. So whether they know or they don't know, they are careless. The day of Jumu'ah is a great day, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, the best day of the week. The best of the days upon which the sun had risen. And then he says, Fihi nafkha, or Fihi saqa, The two sound, or the trumpet would sound on Jumu'ah. The one that kills everybody, and the one makes everybody to wake up, is going to take place on Jumu'ah. Fihi yawmul nafkha, or Fihi yawmul saqa. And it is the day upon which Allah created Adam. Upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the repentance of Adam. Upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent Adam alayhi salam to the earth. Upon which that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passed death upon Adam. It's the day of Jumu'ah. And this is the day as well. Not only that, this is the day where the Prophet said increase in saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pass the salutation of the Prophet. For every salutation that you say, you get a hundred multiple. So every time you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of Jumu'ah, on the night of Jumu'ah, then you get a reply of a hundred times. So they do it once, you get ten. Ten times, a hundred times. Alhamdulillah. Now, we, don't, we need to know that there are people or creation who are being accept, exempted from this terrifying day. Because Allah says, Illa man sha Allah. Except for those whom Allah willed. They will not be terrified. Now, who are they? The, the scholars had differed. Some of them, they said, it is the angels. Some of them said, no, the one who tr just blow the trumpet. Some of them said, no, the angel of the death. Some of them, the dead people, all of them. Some of them said, they're the prophets. But the correct of your opinion, Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Who are they specifically? Exactly. Yeah. Because some of them said, the ones who are the holders of the throne, because they can't die. They can't because they're holders of the throne. So there are lots of sayings, but we don't know exactly who they are, whom Allah gave them the exception and the exemption. Because one day it happened that a Jewish man was selling an item at the era of the time of the Prophet when he was in control of the whole state of Medina. A Muslim person came to bargain with this Jewish man, how much is this and how much is that? So he offered a very, you know, something which is not that much. He mostly sell me this with this. So the Jewish didn't like that. He said, no, by the one who sent Musa with the haqq as a prophet for the human beings. No, by the one who sent Musa as to be a prophet. So the Muslim couldn't hold himself, he struck him in his face. He said, no, by the one who sent Muhammad with the haqq. By the one who sent Muhammad with the haqq. So the Jewish man came to the Prophet and complained. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was bred, annoyed from the Muslims because the one who said Muhammad, the one who said Musa, is the same. Allah subhanahu wa taala. So he said, by the one who chose Musa alayhi salam to be the prophet, he said, no, I'm not Jewish. He hit him. No, by the one who said who chose Muhammad to be the prophet. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, verily, when even the Jewish man he said, Messenger of Allah, I have a ahd, I have a dhimma. I'm a people from the covenant. I gave the we are living in the Islamic State. And this person he had struck my face. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he asked him why he struck his face. He said, Messenger of Allah, this is what happened, this is what took place. The Prophet Allah was so angry. And he said, Don't make preference between awliya Allah. Awliya Allah, don't say that this is the better, this is. Don't make preference between them. For very, the sword, the trumpet would sound, and everybody would be soon away. Except for more Allah wills. And it will be another trumpet sound as well again. And I will be the first one to wake up. Then I would see Musa alayhi salam holding to the throne of Allah the Almighty. I don't know, was he soon away with us? Or was he was exempted? Whom Allah exempted. So even the Prophet of Allah, he's not sure which one. So it is the case to tell you that how the Prophet of Allah is so just that he took the haq and it will be as well retaliation. He would ask the Jewish man as well to take retaliation with the Muslim, to strike him on his face as well. Retaliation. Qisas. It has to be because he's fulfilling his obligation, that Jewish man. And the Jewish people, they know how just he is. Because when they have a dispute, they don't go to their rabbis. They go to the Prophet Muhammad to settle their dispute. When a woman, she had fornicated at their time, they didn't go to each other, they went to the Prophet of Allah. Can you judge between us? So the Prophet said, regarding that woman, what do you say in your Torah? He said, well, we don't say anything. He said, no, there is a rajah, which is the pelting of the stone for an anultra. See, we don't find, we don't find that in our Torah, the book. He said, bring the Torah. So they brought the Torah. And now, the one who's reading Rabbi is called Surya, reading from the Torah. The one, the woman who makes adultery, what's her punishment? And then he jumped a line. Where the line says what? Pelta with stone. Abdullah ibn Salam, the Jewish Rabbi, he was embracing it. Surya, take your finger away. What does that say? And Pelta with stone. So it's the same punishment in the Jewish book, but it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the adultery to be pelted with stones. Coming back, so we know that the people who are being exempted are known in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ghayb, Allah ta'ala a'la. Now, if you want to look at the, to how the day judgment, how tremendous it is and how terrifying day, how terrifying it is, then as the Prophet sallallahu he says, if man sarwa, he was pleased, and yandura ila yawm al to look at the day of resurrection, ra'i al ayn like he's seeing it with his own eyes, then let him recite the following surahs. Surah Surah Three surahs. Read them. And where? And that is why it's not from the, the verse. Ida Sanaun Fatarat. And also Ida Sanaun Shakat. Those are the three surahs. Ida Shamsu Kuwirat. That is when the shams and the, the sun will be coming together. Either shams or kuwira. It will be wrapped together and be thrown into the fire. So those people who used to worship the sun, they would see the God even in the fire. And the, if you want to go into the interpretation of these surahs, you, go, you are going to Ibn Kathir, you will find how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that day of resurrection, as shamsu wal qamar, and also you'll find the nujum, the, the stars, and so on and so forth. We need to know that the Day of Judgment is very close. So close that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر That is the moon is split and the hour is drawing close. And also He says, فَهَلْ يَضْرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَمْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَ فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا And then you're waiting for the hour, for verily أَشْرَاطُهَا, the signs of it, it came. Also the Prophet ﷺ, he says, I was sent with the hour like this. And he pointed with his two fingers, the middle one and the index, to show you there is no difference in their length and also there is no gap in between them. So the hour is being sent with the Prophet 
inni bu'iltu fi nasab al-sa'a. I was sent in the, if imagine that the sa'a, the hour comes with a, a wind, the Prophet Allah came in the breeze that precedes that wind. He's so close. You would say to him, how is he so close? It's been 1,445 years since the Prophet ﷺ was born. How can it be close? Well, if you look at the first creation, Adam salam, and how as well far back before Adam was created, when the jinn was created, and before that the angel were created, and before that the ash was created, and before that the pen one was created, you'll find that the what is left is nothing. If you go as well to the scientists who are not believers, to describe to you, for example, the doom day, you know, the doom day is the end of the world, because they know that the universe now is going back, it's not expanding anymore, it's going back, that's what they believe. It's gonna, it's gonna go to the doom day. They have put a scale, where they put, for example, now that scale from the bottom, what is the thing that they believe that it created? They believe, for example, dinosaurs and all of those things. And then they come, for example, that is the age where, for example, uh, uh, some sort of particular bronze metals have been discovered. And they go bit by bit, and then, and then they've come to the creation of mankind, Adam. And then they go to the Adam, which is that, this is, they believe this is the doom day, finish day. Their scale that all the way up to the last bit where human being was created. So all of that, to what from Adam, never mind from Muhammad is nothing left. This is the scientist, not me. The sun, they believe in that, which is true. So Allah's Messenger, when He says, what is left is nothing compared with this being past. They say this, hundreds of millions of years this earth was created. Adam, God knows how many years ago it was created. We know that more than 10,000 years ago. More than that. Yet, we find that the Prophet was created in the last. So, we are in the last days of that hour, of that time of the earth. And once the first big, more major sign comes in, all the following major signs will come same way. As the Prophet like, it's like a string, it's like a necklace. If one goes, then the other one will follow, straight away. So once we have the Mahdi, then we'll have straight away after that, the Dajjal, we'll have Isa alayhi salam, we'll have Yajuj and Maju, we have the three signs of the earth swallowed here in the west and the east, and also in the Arabian Palestine, we're gonna have the, the smoke, and we're gonna have the bees, and we're gonna have the fire. All of them, bang, 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 all together. And then the sun rising from the west, and then after that, the last thing, which is the fire, is going to gather the people to be like the sham. So prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. We need to know, and also, that the Prophet ﷺ, he says, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمُوا وَصَاحِبُوا أَصُولِ قَدِ الْتَقَمَ الْقَرْبُ He said, how can I be happy, Prophet ﷺ? How can I be relaxed when the holder or the owner of the hall is holding the hall? وَحَنَّا جَبْحَتَ and he had put his neck down. So the angel who's in charge of the trumpet, Prophet Allah can see him. And he said, he's a huge angel, and he's putting now the mouthpiece of that horn into his mouth. Prophet Allah said, how can I be happy? And he had bent his neck like this, meaning what? He's gonna blow. And his eyes is like two planets, shining stars. Big, like shining stars. And he's looking towards the throne. <coughs> from whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's looking towards the throne and he's not blinking. Why? He might be given the command to blow before his eyes blinks. You know, he blinks as well. But he doesn't want to blink now. He can't blink. Because he could be given the command while his blink is while his eyes is closed. He had to keep them open. And he's just waiting for that to give to go ahead and blow into the trumpet. So how can I give you relax? So they said, Messenger of Allah, what should we say? They were terrified, they were scared. He said, Kulu Hasbun Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil. They were kalna ala Allah Rabbina. Repeat, Hasbun Allah, Ni'mal Wakil. Hasbun Allah, Ni'mal Wakil. They were kalna ala Allah Rabbina. They were kalna ala Allah Rabbina. So this is what the words you could say as you are depending upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will suffice, Allah will help us. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi also telling us that. The more we get closer to the hour, the more that the people will go further away from their world. Iqtarabat is sa'a, Prophet said that as the hour will come, and we find that the people are more eager on the dunya, and they are going away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we need to know, Prophet he told us upon whom the hour will take place. If the hour will take place, upon those are ragtag, the evil doers from the people. 
قال على لكع ابن لكع person who's got worth nothing والعياذ بالله it means a سافل من السافل أعوذ بالله the person is the bad the son of the bad الأحمق واللئيم أعوذ بالله the حثالة الناس the ones who are nothing in in society the person who said يذهب الصالحون الأول فالأول righteous people will die first then first and then will people will left they are حثالة كحثالة الشعير just like كحثالة الشعير like the body the body worth nothing uh, the people are not even paying attention to them those whom the hour will strike so you don't really want to be alive when the hour strike because you're going to be from those people أعوذ بالله they don't know anything to do with God those are not going to be monotheistic they're going to be مشركين the Prophet he said لا تقوم الساعة the hour will not come until there will be nobody saying Allah, Allah on the earth. And this is Sahih Muslim and I'm bringing this narration because you might find somebody who's a Sufi would say, why do you say Allah, Allah is not from the dhikr? Where the Prophet he says that the hour will not take place until nobody would say Allah, Allah. So that's why we say Allah, 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 Allah. And it's got a proof, some Sahih Imam Muslim. We need to tell them first of all, did the Prophet and his companions interpret this hadith, Allah, Allah? Then they gather Abu Bakr and Umar and they said, Allah, Allah, Allah. Give us a proof. So what is Allah, Allah here? It means that the other narration, which is in Sayyid Muslim, is La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So if a person who is a kafir tell him, he wants to embrace Islam, do you tell him, say, Allah, Allah? If he says, Allah, Allah, what does that mean? Does he become Muslim? He doesn't become Muslim. Allah, Allah, Allah. If you say, Allah, Allah, he doesn't know. So if you are in a war and you're fighting the enemy, he says, Allah, 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 you can kill him, no problem. <laughs> because he's not a blessed man yet. But if he says, La ilaha illallah, ah. say, you, you have to be negotiate, you have to negotiate with these people. So if he says, Allah, Allah, no problem. He's still a kafir. He says, Allah, Allah, what does it mean? Maybe Allah, Allah is swearing at him. Allah, Allah is believing in him. I don't know. But he says, La ilaha illallah, I know. I'm a Muslim, no problem. I'll stop. But Allah, Allah doesn't mean anything. You can be swearing at my Allah. So it is not from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say Allah, Allah, Allah. Also, we know that, that there is a hadith from the Prophet. He says, لا تزال طائفة من أمة ظاهرين على الحق لا يضروهم من خلفهم ولا من خبلهم إلى اليأت يا أمر الله. This hadith which says there will be a group of people upon the haqq, prevailing on the haqq. They will not be harmed from those people who opposes them. They're not going to be disappointed or let, or let down from those people who as well leave them from their own until the day of resurrection. This hadith and another hadith where the Prophet said, لا تقوم الساعة The hour will not take place until they will leave. Nobody saying Allah, Allah, la ilaha illallah. So how can we reconcile here? The, the solving of this query is being solved between two companions. In Sahih Imam Muslim, on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, he says, that is, لا تقوم الساعة إلا على شرار الخلق. Prophet Sallallahu said, the hour will not take place until there will be only those who are evil from the creation. هم شرهوا من أهل الجاهلية. شرهوا من أهل الجاهلية. They are even more evil than the people of paganism. Whom Muhammad Sallallahu came to them. لا يرون الله بشيء إلا رده عليه. They don't ask Allah for anything except that Allah will not respond to them. He will reject it on them. So Uqba ibn Amr, another companion, he says, Amma ana, as for me, I've heard, I'm not going to say that you are not saying the truth, but I've heard the Prophet Sallallahu he says, لا تزال عصابة, there will be a people upon the haqq. They will be fighting for the establishing of the religion of Allah, and they will be against their enemies until the hour, and they are upon this. So that will contradict with your hadith, that there will be nobody except for the evil ones. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, he says, yes, that is true. <laughs> but Allah would send a breeze, a wind. Kareeh al-misk, like the musk. Masuha masul al-harir. It will touch the person like the silk. I mean, you don't feel it. فَلَا تَتْرُقُ نَفْسًا فِي قَلْبِهِ إِذْ قَالُوا حَمْدًا مِنْ إِمَانٍ إِلَّا قَبَضَتْ It will not leave a soul, any single soul, that has the weight of a mustard seed of Iman, except that it will take him. It will pass death upon him. ثُمَّ يَبْقَ شَرَرُ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ then the only people will be left, the evil ones upon whom the Allah will be taking place. So this is to solve the query. So there will be believers, but just before the day of resurrection, Allah will send that breeze, and that breeze will come onto the believers, and 
he will just like a, it's, a, it's like a, an iman checker. He will check your iman. If you have a mustard seed of iman in your heart, you will die relaxingly. And those people will be left. Those are the ones who are mushrikun, upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this hour takes place. This hour will take place on the Christians, on the Jews, on the disbelievers, any people who are not uh, embracing Islam. And here the hadith of Muslim, on the authority of Mustawra al Qurashi, he says, the Prophet he said, Now, he is Mustawra al Qurashi, he's narrating this hadith, he said, the Prophet he said, the sa'ah, the hour will not take place except that the Rome will be most of the people. The Rome here are the Christians. The Rome and the Christians, like the Westerns. The Rome will be most of the people. Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhu. So he says to him, Undur ma taqul, watch what you're saying. Qala al-Mustawrib, aqulu ma samaitun wa rasulillah. I only say what the Prophet said. Why well, you didn't watch my say, what I said? Amr said, oh, if it were just from the Prophet of Allah, then there is an explanation for this. For verily, those people will be the most. Why? It's not because they are as well ragtag or the kuffar. That means they will be dominant. Those people will be dominant. They will be most powerful. Why? Because he says they have got five things. He said, remember, he got four things and another fifth one, which is nice. Look at these four things. When a tribulation comes to them, they are the most sedate people. They take it calmly, they discuss it, what to do. They are the most quickest people to wake up, to be on their feet after they're struck by an adversity or calamity. So the crisis comes to them, a famine or a defeat, straight away they are in no time on their feet, like happened between them and the people of Persians. When the Persians had defeated them, the Romans seven years, an empire, whole empire was defeated. In seven years, the Rome was able to defeat them. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah was talking about those Rome that were defeated. And the Prophet and Abu Bakr and the companions were sad. Why? Because the one who defeated the Romans are the fire worshippers. And the ones who have been defeated the people of the book. But Allah says, after their defeat, they will be winners. And in seven years, this empire was on their feet and they defeated the people of the majors. So this is the second one. Third one, that the ones who are the fastest in going to charge against after they have fled. So when they have fled because of the defeat, they are the fastest to charge back onto the enemy. And number four, that they're the best people for a person who is weak, for the person who is orphaned, for the person who is indigent. So the person who is indigent, person who needs political asylum. You try to seek political asylum in a Muslim country, what do they do to you? They put you in prison. They don't give you food. Huh? The people are seeking political asylum against the Muslim country. Throw them out. They are running away from the Muslim country to the Romans. And they seek it, uh, benefits and uh, abuse the system sometimes. They abuse the system. But this is where it is. Political asylum they come here. Why? Because the European people, they're giving them. The Romans, these are the Romans. And also he says, وَخَامِسَةٌ حَسَنًا And the fifth one, which is a beautiful one. وَأَمْنَعُهُمْ مِنْ قُلْمِ الْبُلُوكِ And they prevent the tyrancy of the leaders. So when there is a leader, the tyrant, even they've been conned by him, but somehow, say later on, they chuck him out, bring somebody else. He could be tyrant again, but they chuck him out, bring somebody else. And they make an inquiry, which cost the taxpayer more than 50 millions or 100 millions. <laughs> but still, they will, you know, prevent his tyranny. So this is our why Amr al Asi said so, Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Now you need to know that this hour will take place upon those people who do not know anything from the Munkar, Inkar al Munkar or Ma'ruf, you don't really enjoy good, forbid evil, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said. And finally, you need to know, nobody knows, nobody knows when the hour will take place. If any person or any book or anyone had attempted to find out or to limit the time of the hour during such and such time, he is either a liar or a person who needs fame or he doesn't know what is coming out of his head. One of the three. He is hallucinating or he's a liar or he is a jahil, ignorant. So this person he needs to know, nobody knows it because it's from the Mavati al 
You have five keys for the ghayb. Nobody knows them except for Allah. As Surah Al-A'raf, Allah says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُسَاهَا They ask you about the hour of Muhammad. When is it? قُلِ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي Saying, the knowledge when it is, is with my Lord. لا يجليها لوقتها إلا Allah is the only one who will bring it to its time. Nobody else except for him. يَسْأَلُكَ النَّاسُ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنَّ اللَّهِ وَمَا يُنْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ السَّاعَةَ تَكُونُ قَرِيبًا سورة الأحزاب سورة النازعات يسألونك عن الساعة أيانا مرساها فيما أنت من ذكراها إلى ربك منتهى فلئن إن الله عنده علم الساعة سورة لقمان أوصو صحيح مخالد We have the question of Jibreel عليه السلام when he came as a man nobody knew him He asked him about Islam pillars, Iman pillars then he asked him about the day of resurrection. Prophet was answering, answering, answering. Then, when is the day of resurrection? He said, Masailu Adam min al The person who has been questioned doesn't know more than the one who is question, questioning. I don't know. So the Prophet doesn't know, and Jibreel doesn't know. Nobody knows. Even the one who is blowing the trumpet doesn't know. He's waiting for the command, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet said, Bafatihul Ghaybi Khams. The keys of the Ghayb is to be five keys. لا يعلمها إلا الله. Nobody knows it except for Allah. Number one, إن الله عنده علم الساعة. That is, nobody knows the hour except for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Number two, وينزل الغيف. And also, He is the one to send the rain. Nobody knows exactly where and when, which spot and which second that the rain will come. You could find a cloud carrying rain, but you don't know when it's going to rain. You don't know. ولا يعلم. And also, ما في الأرحام إلا الله. And also, nobody knows what is in the womb except for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وما تدري نفسه ما لا تكسب غدا. And nobody knows what he's going to earn tomorrow except for Allah. وما تدري نفسه من أي أرض تموت. And nobody knows which land is going to die except for Allah. So those are the five keys of the life. Now we have to discuss the following. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَا That is, nobody knows what they're going to earn tomorrow, which means nobody knows what is in tomorrow except for Allah. This is to refute those people who are the soothsayers and the fortune tellers who are the ones who predict what is going to happen in the future. Let me tell you that those people are liars. And even though that they come up with something maybe true, that maybe a flood taking place in such and such place, this is one truthful statement they've taken it from the jinn who had still stole this from the heavens, as the Prophet said that he described for us, that the jinn, they go and climb on one another until they steal the hearing, and then the one on the top, he will pass it to the one at the bottom, either before or after the flame ball will come to him, the driving missile. If he managed to put it down, then he will go. Maybe he will hit with that driving missile before he takes it down. So he will be burnt. But whether he's going to convey it to the one below him or not, he will be burnt. But if he would manage to do it, before he was burnt, it would come down all the way to the one who's on the earth, where they climb on top of each other, as I said, and then he would go to the soothsayer, this is his partner, because they've got partnership. They've got, like, for example, the Lion Center, which is the magician. So they've got this agent for them. He goes to them and he gives it to his ear, such and such place is going to take such and such time, which is true, and this magician will lie with it, hundreds of lies, and the people would believe all these hundreds of lies because of one true fact. They will believe all these lies. So, we need to tell you that this is the first thing that these are the sooth says. Also, we need to talk about when we said the Allah, uh, Prophet said, he said, and nobody knows what is in the womb except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, that means whether he is male or female, or he's got provision, or is not going to be provision, or is going to be having a long life or a short life, or is it going to be a righteous man or not righteous man. And you need to know here, this uh, ayah, this verse, it is, talks about the knowledge from anything to do with this ghayb. So if a person asks you, well, we know now from the you know, advanced medication that the doctors can know whether it's male or female, if it's in the womb of the woman. I'll tell you.